In this video I'm going to show you how to work the statistics functions on your Casio FX991 ES Plus calculator. So let's start by getting into the statistics mode. So get into statistics mode, you press mode and then three, so mode three, and we get this menu here. Most of these options here are for regression. Most of the time you'll probably be using this one var, which is your single variable statistics, so just an x here is a data. So if you had x and y, you might want to use the line mode, which is where you've got an X series and a Y series. So you can enter two sets of data. So let's start by looking at single variable statistics. This is where we can do summations, we can find the mean and the standard deviation. So to do this, we get in the statistics mode, so we're doing mode three as before, and then we want to select one for single variable. Then we could enter some data, let's just say one, two, three, seems like a good set of data. And then to save to memory using the AC key, so press AC and then go back into statistics mode so we can access our functions to do the calculations. So press shift and then you'll notice on the one key there's stat, so you press that and we're back into the statistics menu. So if we choose number four we can see various options. We've got N, which gives us the number in our sample. See, we did one, two, three, so N is going to be three. It's one, two, three, three bits of data. Shift one gets us back into that mode. So four, we've also got things like the mean, which is this X bar. We've got sigma X, which is standard de deviation based on N, and SX, which is standard deviation based on N minus one. So if you want N minus one standard deviation, you just press four. You, that function will come up, press equals, and you get the standard deviation when you divide by n minus 1. Sometimes when you've got large amounts of data, you may want to use the frequency column, and there's a set of instructions which show you how you can turn on the frequency column. So if you had data like um, 1552, instead of entering all of that, you could just put 2 in the frequency column for 5, because you've got 5 twice. That would save you entering another line. But if you had 5 12 times, then rather than typing 5 out 12 times, you would just put 12 in a frequency column. So let's move on and look at how to do Pearson's R and regression. It's quite a common calculation. So this lets you fit data to, in this case, a line. Um, but you can use other functions such as exponential, logarithmic. Basically, take your data points and find a line that approximates them. And in the case of a line, you can use Pearson's R to determine how good a fit um, you have, how correlated your data is. So just very briefly, we'll look at some theory to do with Pearson's R. Um, this is the formula for Pearson's R. It's quite an, an, quite an annoying formula. It takes a long time to evaluate. You're finding the difference between every single point and the mean, dividing by the standard deviation of that series. And you've got this one minus one over n minus one, multiplying everything, and you're doing the summation of these two things multiplied. And it gets very messy and takes a long time to do. Um, we'll also look at what Pearson's R is actually telling you. So if you've got data that's sloping down the way with every point on the line, you're going to get Pearson's R equal to minus one. If every point is on the line, so it's perfectly correlated, you're going to get R equals one. If it's somewhere between those, t between uh, zero and one, that's going to mean that you've, your data is the line fits the data um, up to a point. The closer to one, the better the, the fit. And if R equals zero, that's telling you that the, um, there's no correlation, that no line is going to do this set of data justice. So let's do this on the calculator. So we're going to take this data and we're going to find the equation of a line that best approximates that data and we'll find the correlation coefficient to see how good that line is. And clearly when you look at this, you can see that the equation is going to be 2x plus 1. 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5. And the same goes for that. So clearly 
y equals 2x plus 1. And uh, just bear in mind that this is in the form bx plus a. That's how the calculator understands this. So the calculator tells us b is 2 and a is 1. Also, the correlation coefficient is obviously going to be equal to 1 because all of these points are going to be on the line. So it's going to be perfectly correlated and it's going to slope up the way, so that's why it's positive. So let's do this on the calculator. So, and to get into the correct mode, so we're pressing mode 3 and we want the a plus bx mode, so we'll press 2. That gets us our x and y series, so let's enter the data. So we've got 1, 3, 2, it's quite awkward to enter data on here, 3, and then we've got 7. So we've got to save this data to memory. The AC button is like your save button. So press AC. And then we're going to have to do our calculations. We need back into the statistics menu. So we're going to press um, shift, then 1, then 5 puts us in regression. And we want 3, so we'll get R. And that gives us R equals 1, as we expected. We're going to do the same thing for... Um, for B, for the line, so we're going to press Shift, 1, then 5, so we're in the regression, regression menu, we're wanting to find A, so A equals 1, as we expected, same thing for B, Shift, 1, 5 for the regression menu, and then we want B, which is 2, and then equals, we get 2, so we've got A equals 1, B equals 2, the equation of the line is going to be bx plus a, so do the substitution, and you get 2x plus 1, as we expected. That's how you do uh, Pearson's R in regression very quickly. And the other cool thing that this calculator is able to do is normal distribution calculations. So we'll take a look at how to do those. Okay, so... The normal distribution lets us find things like P of T, Q of T, and R of T, where your T is what's called the normalized function and is um, an X data point subtracted from the mean of the X data divided by that X point times the standard deviation. So to teach you how to do this on the calculator, we'll just jump straight into an example. And we're going to find Q of T when x equals 3. And if you're interested, what q of t actually is, is um, you've got your normal Gaussian, or otherwise known as your normal distribution, this very famous graph. Um, and q of t is the integral of this graph between 0 and t. And it's a probability distribution. Um, so, first thing we have to do is we have to turn on the frequency column. We had a set of instructions um, on how to do that back here. So we'll just turn on our frequency column. So that's how it's done. So we're going to do shift mode. That takes us into the setup menu. Then we're going to go down to the next menu. We want um, four, which is stat, and then frequency. And that's us got the frequency column on. So that's the first step. So we've got this data here. And we're going to have to enter this data. So let's just go um, straight ahead and enter the data. You obviously know that you're wanting to be in uh, mode stat. You should know this by now. And then we've got single variable, just X series. So 1. So we're doing 1. We've got 3. And we've got 2 3. So put a 2 in the frequency column. Um, 7. And then we've got 8, and we've got 4 of those, so I've put a 4 in the frequency column. So just entered that data here. As usual, press AC to save. That's now in memory. So now let's just access the functions that we need. So we're going to be going um, to find T. So what you have to enter first is enter your X value. And in this example, we've got X equals 3. So we're going to press 3 to start with. Then we're going to press Shift 1. That puts us in the correct menu. We want the distribution functions. Remember, this is a normal distribution, so we're thinking distribution. So 5, and we're wanting T first. 
and we get minus one point something. So we'll just call that minus one. Now we want to find Q of T. This is how you do it. Um, shouldn't come as any surprise when you see it done. So shift one back into stats mode. We want distribution, so we're pressing five. Q of T is option two. That gets us the Q function here. We want to access our answer memory. So that's the last answer we got, which is the one sitting here. So if we just press the ANDS button, that goes there, and for good practice, we'll close the brackets. And then press equals, and we get Q of T is 0 0.34, and so on. So that's a very quick overview of all the statistics functions that you can use. And if you play around with them, you'll get quite familiar with them. Maybe be able to do more complicated regressions using the exponential and the logarithmic um, functions that the calculator has got. So hopefully this has been helpful and thank you for watching.